Uh, first couple things uh, regarding our current team. This weekend, we have a big weekend. Friday night, we're playing our international game against the NC Dinos uh, pro team out of Korea that trains here in Tucson. That'll be at 6 o'clock. Uh, good opportunity for our team to run through a regular game day thing. And then Sunday, we'll play uh, San Diego up at uh, the Brewers spring training place up in Phoenix. So a really good opportunity for our team uh, to finish the fall strong and then the Wild vs. Cats the following week. So all good there and uh, moving forward. Uh, Sign-in day, uh, this is a really good day for our program. And uh, I feel like we've had a couple good ones in a row. I don't know that any have been as strong as this. Uh, a theme that you'll hear me talk about a lot with this particular group is character. And uh, the longer I'm in coaching, the more that I value that. I mean, the talent speaks for itself. I'm sure you guys have notes on the players that we've signed to this point, and they're what we want them to be as far as talented players. But I think there's some real difference makers in terms of maturity, in terms of character, and the ability not only just to be a great player for us, but make everybody around them better, which uh, has me very excited about the, the direction we're heading with the young players in the program now and then adding these guys uh, to that. Uh, a couple quick uh, thank yous. First to the players and the families themselves that chose Arizona. I just mentioned, you know, the high character part of it with them. That obviously starts at home, you know, with, with quality parents and families and, and structures, and, and we certainly have that. And it's a big deal for them to entrust us with probably the most important phase of their life as far as development as a player, as a person. Uh, there's certainly, we have everything we need at Arizona to, to help them accomplish things physically, but um, we couldn't be in a better place um, with the type of kids we're bringing in and, and the families that, um, you know, guided them here. Uh, secondly, and, and very important part of this is, you know, this is a high-level class. I mean, this is as good as I've probably had at any point at any school, and there's a lot of people that make that happen. The university itself uh, sells an unbelievable product in terms of education, in terms of environment, and all of those types of things, you know, starting with, you know, Dave Heakey as our athletic director, really gives us everything we need to be successful and to recruit this type of, of player and then our coaching staff, and, and this particular year in, per, in particular, we went through some transition. Um, so my entire coaching staff, you know, you think about um, Coach Brown left to go to Cal State Fullerton. He did a lot of the early work as far as initial findings of the players and guys that we should be on um, and did a great job during his time here. Um, Dave Lawn really stepped up during this summer. We were without a coach for – um, a good month and a half uh, or 45 days, somewhere in that nature. And I don't think he spent much time in, in Tucson during that time. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, what attracts players, uh, development attracts players. You know, on, on the hitting side and offensive side, I, I really believe we have one of the best products in, in the country at any conference, at any school. Uh, so Coach Wanaka doing a good job developing our players allowed us to have a reputation to bring in four or five of the best position players in the country in this this class. And then obviously, big deal, adding Coach Yeski and what he brings to the table, you know, from a development standpoint, reputation standpoint. We really closed extremely well on the pitching side of it and following our program, that was a, a big deal. Uh, the last thing I'll say, and then I'll touch on each of them individually, is uh, we're not done. There's still some pieces of this thing that uh, we have to put together. We're in a uh, real competitive battle for one player uh, in particular that we should have some clarity on in the next few days. Um, and then there's some other pieces, potentially two sport players, that we have to get some things ironed out in that regard and, and uh, whatnot. So this is a good start uh, with 11 players, and I think they'll fit extremely well into what we have in the program right now. So real quick, uh, and I'll be happy to take your questions, just kind of going through them quickly. I think you have a list. Uh, Jacob Berry is the first player on there from Queen Creek High School up in the Phoenix area. I mean, in my opinion, he's the best player in the state of Arizona for this class in 2020. And uh, tremendous hitting ability. He'll look like a middle-of-the-order hitter at Arizona uh, very early on in his career. Uh, incredible bat speed, hitting ability, power, 
uh, plate discipline. I mean, really checks all the boxes there, has really improved as an infielder. And this will be a common theme with a few of these guys. I mean, as a special person, as an elite person, uh, that was a, a really big part of the foundation of this class and one of our earlier commits. Uh, Kyle Casper is an outfielder and right-handed pitcher from the San Diego area, Valhalla High School. Uh, again, tremendous athlete, tremendous skill set, one of those guys that you can't wait to coach. I mean, really has it all in terms of baseball tools, arm speed, bat speed, running speed, and, and a guy that I believe his best days are in front of, of, in front of him. Riley Cooper, left-handed pitcher from the Fresno area at, at Clovis North High School. I mean, I have one note, and it's winner. So you can look on his, his high school statistics and find out not many people get the bat on the ball, get on base, or let alone score a run. He has a lot of uh, or high-level pitch ability that I think will play really well in our park, being that it, it, it's big. You know, curveball changeup, but just the competitive winning part uh, really separates Riley. Chase Davis, uh, to be honest, is, is one of the most physically gifted players that I've ever recruited. Uh, we'll certainly fight extremely hard to keep him from professional baseball. Uh, but just left-handed, athletic, strong, fast, and on top of it has a, a great personality that, that lends itself to success in, uh, in baseball. Ryan Kaiser, pitcher from Valencia High School in Southern California, Really good curveball, really good pitchability, swing and miss stuff, really coming into his own. He's had a great fall and has really developed and, you know, has weapons that he can use, you know, to uh, collect outs, you know, in, in a conference full of really good hitters. Uh, I'm really excited about Ryan and the direction he's, he's heading. Mason Millett, uh, just right down the street at Pima College, right-handed pitcher, uh, originally went to Gonzaga out of high school, um, has developed physically. He's up to 95 miles an hour. I got to give a, a tip of the cap to Coach Hockamy over there because he called me one day this summer and he's like, hey, man, you need to get here like now or you're going to lose him because a lot of his development happened pitching in, in the summer. And so Coach Lon hustled over there and we got him to campus the next day. Uh, TJ Nichols, uh, right handed pitcher and shortstop from the Sacramento area, Oakmont High School. Uh, big time, big time get for our program. Uh, a legitimate. Friday night ace type stuff, uh, high level fastball, uh, swing and miss type breaking ball, uh, has the athleticism to play shortstop uh, if that's what we needed him to do. And just again, an elite competitor. He's like a 1300 SAT, four point bazillion GPA, uh, but also has that right competitive attitude to make him uh, as elite as you can be. So very excited about TJ. Uh, Javen Pimentel, uh, we just got this weekend. He com came on an official visit and, and committed to us a very athletic left-handed pitcher, uh, which if you're following the trajectory of our, our team and, and program, you know, left-handed pitching is a big need moving forward. And to be able to make matchups the way that we want to give teams different looks. And uh, I mean, this guy's body looks like he's going to be coming into his own in the next couple years. And I'm proud of him with the time difference. He, uh, he got his NLI in time to be announced in this press conference. So that was a good, good start. Chase Silseth, uh, right-handed pitcher, College of Southern Nevada, is a, a four-year, two-year, four-year transfer. He was at the University of Tennessee last year, originally from New Mexico. Uh, has the makings of a potential weekend starter right off the bat. Uh, he's one of those guys, when you go and watch him pitch this fall, it's like, man, I wish we had him this year and uh, that's that's really exciting uh highly confident kid just the mound presence really you know screams like i'm gonna win and again i mentioned that uh character piece with a lot of these guys chase really fits into that um last two and certainly not least uh daniel susak uh catcher from jesuit high school in northern california um you know very excited to get daniel i mean we're obviously going to lose austin and uh, matt or we're anticipating losing both of those guys this year, so the catching position, really important. And uh, to get Daniel this summer was a, a big deal. And uh, luckily, uh, the relationship piece is something that is really important in recruiting. And uh, I coach his brother, Matt, at Nevada, and uh, Coach Yeski uh, coaches uh, brother Andrew at Oregon State several years ago. And, and just the connection with their family, 
really strong and, and really excited to get Daniel here. I mean, the best way I can say it, I think he's elite offensively and I think he's elite defensively. He's also a really good quarterback uh, at Jesuit. They're in the state playoffs, uh, or excuse me, the section playoffs still this weekend, and he has his team, team going um, at a high level. Uh, Nick York uh, from Midi High School in the Bay Area. I mean, plain and simple, I mean, no matter who is on the field, this player is always the best player on the field, in my opinion. He just has that special uh, competitiveness. I mean, he's an elite hitter, can play in the infield, um, just makes everybody around him better, and uh, was a very highly contested uh, recruiting battle that when we were in it, I did not get much sleep. And, um, you know, very excited to add uh, Nick to our program. And uh, that's a name that I know that, that Wildcat fans will um, – you know, we'll be hearing a lot of over the next next few years. So again, the, the talent level is, is what we want it to be, but I think how these guys fit into what we'll be returning in 2021 and then just their maturity and, and attitude and, and character really make this a, a home run, in, in my opinion. And, and I, don't, I don't use those words uh, lightly. So very excited. Obviously, we got to put some work in. Some pro teams will have interest in some of these guys and educate them, but I, I think the family piece and the value of college and the value of Arizona is held really high or in high regard for these families. So I like our chances to, to get a lot of them to campus, and I'm excited to keep building that relationship and, and make sure they're on this campus next fall. Any questions for Coach? Coach, these recruits that are coming in, uh, how many of them do you think will be impact players that will be uh, maybe pushing for a start, starting a position? Yeah, I, I think all of, all of them have the ability to do that. I mean, I think there's 11. All 11 will have the ability to do that. I think there's six pitchers. There's five position players. I think uh, our players know in the program, and I think it's a good good place to come, is we're going to play the best player no matter your age. You know, there's a certain uh, level that it takes to be on the field for an elite team in Division One baseball or the Pac-12, and the guys that reach that level and can do the things that we need them to do to help us win are the guys that ascend to that and I think all 11 of these guys have the physical ability to do that and what I'm excited about is I think a lot of them have the maturity to push I mean if you followed our team last year we're not afraid to put freshmen on the field I think you know we won 13 in the last 14 games with five freshmen in, in the starting lineup so um, I think having a solid junior class if you were to look forward in 2021 with a really good group of freshman pitchers uh, this year, and then adding these guys, it's it's kind of starting to turn into exactly what we want it to look like, and uh, that's exciting. With Susek's brother having gone through professional baseball, made it to the majors, yeah. what sort of influence do you think that might have on the family's decision whether to go to college or just sort of what path um, they will choose? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, you know when you look at uh, Daniel. Uh, the pure or the family dynamic that is surrounding him is, puts him in a really advantageous uh, position. His dad, Nick, is a blue collar, hard worker, high values, uh, demanding, you know, Daniel's probably laughing at me right now, uh, dad. And it's why his kids have turned out the way that they have, like elite. Um, Andrew, you know, has had success in professional baseball. He also went to college. And so then it falls back on us, the educational piece of it to go up there and, and really look at the catching position. And if you dissect that and look at it really over the last 20 years, there's not a lot of American born catchers that have signed out of high school and been able to create a long career for themselves in the big leagues. Most of them have gone through college or have come from another country. And so that particular position, college is really important. You know, we'll get into the specifics of that. I know he's excited about Arizona. I know he's excited about the opportunity here. I know going to the College World Series holds value to him. He's obviously friends with a couple guys in this class. And, um, you know, I think he's, he'll be a, a mainstay and, and somebody that we can, you know, one of those foundational pieces of, of building the type of program we want. Catcher like quarterback where you kind of want to have at least one in every recruiting class? It, yes, uh, to answer your question simply, and we feel like with Daniel and Caden Hobson, a freshman on our team, he had three hits, I think, the other day against uh, 
Cal Poly Pomona and does a good job receiving and blocking. Both of them have the versatility to play other positions, kind of like we've done with Austin and Matt. So this puts us in a situation where um, both of those guys, we feel comfortable with them behind the plate, but they both have the hitting ability to keep themselves in the lineup and move around the field. Coach, you mentioned left-handed pitching being important. Uh, what's your pitching staff uh, rounded up to be this coming season? This coming season for 20? It's, it's, it's going well. I mean, arm strength is not a problem. I mean, there's a lot of guys that are 90 miles an hour and better. And um, th I think there's a lot of them that fall into this category. They're a tick away from taking their talent and getting it to the point where they can be a, a major contributor on a winning team. I think there will be some guys that did not contribute much last year that you see a significant jump in and it's almost like where did that guy come from which is exciting I think there's a couple guys in terms of uh, Quinn Flanagan and Vince Vanelli who had success for us last year and they fill up the strike zone with three pitches so we're excited about those guys and then this particular freshman class right now uh, we have some real arm strength and real competitiveness pitchability uh, Chandler Murphy Dawson Nets Hunter Cope Wesley Scott and then a couple others um, that have a chance to be pretty good. And I mean, this thing all starts and ends on the mound. I mean, last year we might as well have been a football team that averaged 70 points a game. I mean, that's what the equivalent of, of what we were offensively. So um, I think we're moving in the right direction with that group and then this group to, to have this thing where it's, it's really locked down from the mound for years to come. I feel like when uh, Coach Jesse got hired, people viewed it as this is the magic elixir that's going to solve all your pitching <laughs> problems overnight. Yeah. Can you explain how the process actually works with that and how soon we can expect to see yeah. results? Yeah, I th well, I think that's, I can't give you the how quickly can you expect to see results. I can tell you that the information that he is giving them, the process that he is putting them through, puts them in the best position to be the best version of themselves. Now, there's a lot of accountability on the player with that. So I think in terms of this year in the immediate, the, the onus is going to go back on the players. And they, they, there's no excuse. They have everything that they need from a pitching development standpoint. And frankly, we're just looking for the eight, if you will, that are going to rise to the top and, and carry what's going to be a good team. Um, now, moving forward in the future, when you look at this deal and you talk about uh, Cooper, Kaiser, Millet, Millet Nichols, Pimentel, Silseth, hopefully another, that um, his impact in, in recruiting is obviously really strong. I mean, the, the development track record speaks for itself. And so I think we're going to end up with better pitchers here because he's here. You know, the development part of it, that goes back to the player. How good do you want to be? How committed are you going to be? And, you know, hopefully our players are watching this or our pitchers are watching this because I'm, I'm looking. I'm excited to see who, who rises to the top in that. What were your biggest takeaways from the scrimmage? Scrimmage the other day. Um, we can win regardless of who's at the front of it. Now, I know it's a Division II program, but they have a lot of 22-year-olds on that team and swung the bat well. But I think uh, the guys, if you will, went a combined two for 20, and we scored 24 runs on the day. And um, so I think there's uh, incredible length to the lineup. Um, and uh, it, nobody's going to need to put any pressure on themselves because it's like the next guy can pick you up. So I think position player-wise, that was good. I think we're going to make some adjustments in terms of where we're playing guys to be the best that we can defensively and to eliminate uh, any mistakes that make it harder for the pitcher. And so if that means we have to make a couple, couple concessions offensively, uh, I'm willing to look at that hard, and we're going to look at that hard over the next couple weeks to make sure that we catch and throw the baseball at, at a major league level. And um, I'm excited to see the impact that that has. And so it's just we're trying to figure out our best team. As far as the pitching thing, a lot of guys, especially at the front end of that thing, are going out there with the Arizona jersey on for the first time. And there was a common theme early in the game. The first inning was a little wobbly and rocky. Then they settled in. I think that speaks to their talent. And then we got to a point where we threw, I think, 10 or 11 scoreless innings in a row, which was probably the best, uh, the best thing that we saw that day. Now, we're playing a professional team on Friday night. We're playing a very good team on Sunday. And then the, the Fall World Series thing is really competitive. So I think even more of those things will 
come to light and we can put our put our players in a position to develop on their own for a month and get ready when we come back in January. Do you expect Dante to play this weekend? I don't expect him to play. Well, he did play last weekend uh, in a limited capacity. You know, I mean, he's a key part of what we want to do. I just mentioned the importance of defense. I mean, he was the arguably the best center fielder in the Pac-12 defensively last year, so he'll become an important part of what we're trying to do. So therefore, right now, there's the, the risk-reward of him coming back too quick and having a setback is just not worth it, you know. But he uh, ran around the bases, you know, executed some short game things last weekend. So he's moving in a real positive direction to get back, but not. I don't think he'll play in full capacity this weekend. Glass had five hits yeah. in the scrimmage. How has he looked this week? Awesome. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the real positive things about what's going on and, and really even in the last three weeks, I think, uh, again, you know, we're going to develop players that – and the development that happens there is going to benefit them. But, frankly, the players need to do what our team needs them to do to be good. And I think Jacob's a really good example of that, of, of the work that he's put in offensively. First off, he's a lot stronger than he was last year. So he's moving the bat a lot faster. The ball comes off his bat a lot better. But there's a type of at bat – with the other players in the offense that he needs to be able to take for our team to be successful. And I think Saturday he executed that like beautifully. Like if he can do that, I mean, that makes us tough to beat. Again, some of our better players, you know, didn't have the type of days we've kind of grown accustomed to. And then there was five other guys that really picked him up. And, and Jacob was at the forefront of that. really strong. I think uh, TJ Nichols is, is somebody that I spoke uh, a lot about. I mean, we were really on TJ um, hard. I mean, once he, he was committed to another school, actually, and then we found out he wasn't going to be going to that school. And then as soon as we found that out, we got on him. We developed a good rapport. He wanted to come to a place with warm weather. Um, I have a, a friend of mine actually works with his dad kind of randomly. Um, and then uh, I would say it was probably in Arizona, you know, Oregon State has had a good presence in Northern California. So when we kind of combined it, it certainly swung that in our, our favor. So that just kind of gives you an example. Uh, Chase Silseth is a guy we had on a visit this fall and committed. Uh, there were some other big time programs wanting him because he can make an immediate impact next year. I mentioned uh, Javen Pimentel was here this weekend. And um, so he's made a, a, a significant impact, you know, the type of impact that I hoped that it would when, when we got Nate to come down here. Any more questions for Coach? How difficult is it to evaluate that character component of the process? Uh, it's difficult. I think you just have to have the courage to walk away sometimes when you see the talent that you want, but there's a missing piece in there. And we've certainly done that. And over the course of doing this for almost 20 years now, I've certainly missed on it on that evaluation as well. But I think this year's team, we're closer to it. Um, you know, I, I, we've had zero drama off the field, you know, and our players should be commended for that. Um, and uh, I think this group is another level of that. I mean, when you look at Nick York, you know, his, his mom was a uh, elite softball player at Fresno State, had a great experience there, has raised three boys that are all – High-level kids. I mentioned the Susacks and their family dynamic. You know, T.J. Nichols, uh, Kyle Casper is a great kid. Riley Cooper, Jacob Berry. I don't want to leave any of them out, but I feel strongly that all of them are in a real position to be successful here because of the type of people that they are. You know, the baseball thing we can get worked out if the player is in the right frame of mind, and I think these guys will be in the right frame of mind. Thanks, everyone.